Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Future Friday. Today we're going to take a look at the hot topic of this year, Hyperloop. So let's drive right into it. So question comes to the mind, who started this? Elon Musk. So what was the idea? What was the grand plan? The idea was very simple. They're going to give you fast travel, as in faster than aircraft, cheaper than bus fare. That was the whole idea fast and cheap transport uh, they initially quoted five times cheaper now you have to understand it this is where it became a scam uh, elon musk in 2012 uh, he interviewed a reporter and then he pitched this idea however the idea was created by this guy and this is robert godhart he's the father of rocketry basically he's called the uh, initiator of space race basically if he didn't do his job we wouldn't have any rockets or satellites so and he also proposed the idea of vacuum trim not in exact same sense but elon musk did not uh, made any mention of that and so suffice to say that that's when your spider sense should start tingling so how does he supposed to do this like you know give you faster than you know air travel and cheaper than bus so the whole idea is a merger of two technologies. The two technologies in question is maglev and vacuum trains. Now, maglev is a quite uh, old technology, known very well. And uh, the whole idea is that you have a maglev in a vacuum. So, but be mindful, there are some old designs that uh, used to have air in front of it and uh, has a turbine design and all that. That design was thrown out instantaneously because it was acting like a hovercraft. And anybody who knows that military has giant hovercraft, hovercrafts are not efficient. Because to fight gravity, you need end up, you end up spending so much energy, it's pointless. Wheels become cheaper again. So that idea was thrown out so if you see any hyperloop design and concept work that has big turbine in front yeah that, those are outdated that should tell you like even the designs are not uh, up to date that should tell you everything you need to know so let's uh, in principle everything sounds okay like you know it's a maglev it's a known technology vacuum trains how hard that can be so what's the issue so i'm gonna be honest with you guys it can be done if you put enough money time energy it can be done physics is not at the other end saying like yo you cannot do this it can be done however the scam part why i'm calling it a scam is the price part where they are saying it's gonna be cheap heck cheap screw that like uh, high speed trains are not cheap like uh, shinshan the bullet train of japan it cost almost $100 to $150 per ticket, so it's not cheap. No, neither the railway travel that is uh, in Europe is cheap. So high speed train is not cheap and this guy is going to bring that cost down while traveling faster than aircraft. Yeah, that's the part of scam part. And you have to understand this guy has company that build electric cars, electric trucks, spaceship that can go to Mars and somehow he's not building this own thing that that was like I'm like okay bro that was the you know my, for me final nail in the coffin is if you can build BFR big Falcon rocket and you can't build this like seriously and he's like I'm gonna open source this design even the Tesla is open source yet somehow he's still building it so this this is at this point you know pieces started to fall together as a scam and to give you an idea what things can be done but should not be done because of cost reason, I am giving you two examples. Space Shuttle, this was the worst spacecraft ever made, the most expensive and the most deadly. And this is Concord, which was more successful, like it, it did not fail miserably, but there is a reason we no longer travel at supersonic speed. The fuel consumption, basically the energy cost of this thing was so high. Uh, like there is a reason you don't see them flying, like it worked, both of these things worked, but you don't see them anymore why that's the whole point it can be done but it's not worth doing it because of cost so let's uh, dive right into it so maglev i said the maglev is the you know core aspect of this technology so the idea is quite old idea is 100 years old what does that idea is basically you take a motor and you uh, you have AC induction motor where you have a stator and you have a rotor, rotor rotates. So you take the stator and you open it up like this. That's it, nothing fancy about that. It's called linear accelerators or linear motors basically. And there is no spinning in it, it's just to have a plate and uh, you have another plate moving on top of it. That's the idea of maglev. 
Now, first maglev idea was patented. Like, yes, there is patent on this shit. It's uh, 1905. First patent was granted on this topic by Alfred Zinn. Ah, that's a German name. I can't pronounce it. And you have to understand, even though maglev has no friction from wheels, it still has friction from air. So you are removing a lot of, uh, you know, wheels, noise and all that. Yes, but you're not removing air. So it still has a lot of very high energy cost. Now, uh, Japan is the only country that has a network of uh, maglev and, uh, you know, high speed network that are compared uh, in this, you know, apple to apple comparison. Because if I compare Germany to uh, Japan, it won't be a fair comparison. So because they are operating on both of them, I'll give you some statistics from their point of view. So their maglev train that you can see in this picture, that runs at 500 kilometers per hour. Very nice speed. But it takes 100 watt hour per seat per kilometer. Now, don't go uh, deep into it. Just pay attention to the number. It takes 100 watt. Hour. They have Shinshan, that is the bullet train, and uh, it also operates as the same, you know, high speed network train. It takes. It's traveling at 300 km per hour, and these are average speed. Like uh, this is the what they are trying to maintain. But it takes 29 watt hour per kilometer. So understand the difference, how far you have jumped. You went from, let's say, 30 to 100, but you did not went in speed three times up. You only went um, basically 1.5 times. So this is a very crucial part about maglev. Even though you can make it cheap, the energy cost is so high that you have to pay for it. Like many people have this uh, wrong delusional idea that, you know, when you have uh, electric trains, it does not have a cost. Like it still has a cost. You're still burning coal. You're still taking power from nuclear power plant or still taking from any source that you can get. It's, it's not free. The only thing is you are doing a much more inefficient delivery. And uh, this is a very crucial part for this sort of thing. So as you can see, the power went three times, but the speed did not went up three times. And the reason why maglev, even though a hundred year old idea, and as you can see in this picture, the first commercial maglev was introduced in 1984. So yeah, this is an old technology. And the reason why it's not catching on, even though it can do very crazy speeds, the world record is set by this train is around 600 kilometers per hour. So yeah, it's fast. Let's just say it's fast. Fastest track travel uh, that is possible. The reason for that is cost per kilometer now this is very crucial part for when you are talking about public transit it's not like an expensive car that you can drive on a you know normal roadway you have to consider the cost of the track that you're building so cheap tracks like uh, normal american tracks can cost upwards of uh, 15 to 30 dollars per kilometer like of course the cost is very high but over hundreds of kilometers so now and high speed train networks cost around 70 million dollar per kilometer Yes, it does go that high. Outside of that, now you might be like, okay, $70 million uh, per kilometer. How high this can be? 130. 70 million per kilometer to $130 million per kilometer. And it piles up. So the longer you uh, network you make it, the more expensive it will become. So suffice to say, there is a reason why it never caught on. And uh, this is when uh, I uh, like the first white paper published about the Hyperloop network from you know Los Angeles and all that. Uh, the proposed price was around eight billion dollar, and I'm like, what? That's the cost of normal metro networks. Heck, even metros are more expensive than that. How the heck is gonna make a revolutionary thing which was like you know cheaper than that? So practically speaking, Japan is the only country that is actually investing in maglev network. Everybody else is like the price to performance ratio is just not worth it. So they started to make a track like how they have bullet train network. They are making a maglev train network of around 300 kilometers of track. The total cost, given the fact that they are the only country, only company that actually knows how to build it, operate it, and they've been doing it for around 30 years. So suffice to say, they know what they are doing. Their cost is around $80 billion. So yeah, let that sink in. They took $80 billion. Now, of course, there is a reason why it's so damn high. It's because they have to drill through a lot of uh, you know mountains. And that's compulsory, otherwise you, you can't bank at high speed. So this is the reason why maglevs don't catch on. Like it's old technology. We can do it. We've been doing it. It's just pointlessly expensive. The capital investment will be so high, the ticket price will become idiotically absurd. The current ticket price of uh, bullets, bullet trains are already as almost matching an aircraft. 
now you're talking about making that too high and it cannot travel as fast as a plane so that's why maglev you don't see maglev everywhere these are the core reasons capital investment is too high because of kilo, uh, dollar per kilometer and it's not cheap to run it's like just because you are not seeing the engine you know uh, mileage and all that doesn't mean it's not running on energy it's still taking energy from coal it's still taking energy from hydropower dam which you are have to divert from instead of going to the city it has to eat this up so suffice to say that's why you don't see maglev everywhere now we come to the vacuum tunnel part now the reason why you are uh, you want to put a maglev in a vacuum tunnel it will allow higher speed even with the same energy content let's say you put uh, uh, the same sunshine and if you put it in a vacuum of course it will go much faster and it also reduces power consumption so those are awesome then what's the side effect yeah uh, to ideally you would want this tunnel to be underground why well with, if you don't do it underground you will have what's called thermal expansion where the pipes will expand and contract now it's a problem with rail also but it can have gaps in it vacuum tube cannot have gap with it and for all of those no it's a low pressure no it's vacuum the reason why they call it low pressure is because you can't tangibly speaking make it absolute vacuum so there will always be some atmosphere and read the document it's like a altitude of 1 lakh feet or something like higher than that basically higher than commercial airline where you cannot breathe it's it's almost space they just know that you can't make a tube 100% vacuum so they are calling it low pressure now you can't deal with thermal expansion as easily uh, as you deal with railways bridges and things like that because well you have to have a seal so it's not unsolvable but it will make your tracks per kilometer cost even higher now it takes a lot of power to run the vacuum like uh, his deal for ask any of your friend who deal with uh, physics or chemistry they just might have uh, vacuum pumps in their lab or you know school also have lab it takes a lot of power to just you know create a vacuum to give you an idea this is the test track the elon musk one mile long track that took half an hour to make a vacuum and that's not even full scale so it has much less volume than any vacuum chamber uh, the biggest vacuum chamber is uh, rated as second biggest the first biggest is large hadron collider so suffice to say it takes a lot of energy suffice to say it takes a lot of energy to make a vacuum and so not only uh, you are losing energy while making the vacuum you also have to maintain it it's not like uh, you made a vacuum it will be permanently vacuum and this is the part where i am like all the presentation all the white papers they are missing it's like it needs freaking airlock where is the airlock like all they show is like you know uh, there is a hyperloop and it comes to the it cannot do like that there has to be like it has to go to a dock it has to seal the vacuum so it do, whole atmosphere does not go inside it then it has to like do step by step otherwise it will explode literally it will like of course it won't explode it's just it will get expanded so you need airlocks and airlocks are not cheap and not to mention they also leak like you cannot have 100% perfect airlocks so this airlock part is completely removed in everything and the one thing the uh, people don't understand properly is the vacuum is very dangerous this is a rail car this is uh, what happens when rail car ends up with a vacuum in it now as you can see th these are not made with you know thin metal they are made of quite thick metal and designed to withstand collisions however vacuum is very powerful and the bigger the chamber the more powerful vacuum will become now can we design things that can handle this yes very easily uh, some marines are designed to handle this sort of pressure here's the deal i do not i do not think i need to tell you the cost of some marines metal like it's idiotically expensive and this is where i keep coming back to it's not that it cannot be done it's just the cost of it will be so high and the fact that nobody is showing you airlocks in the presentations you know the proposed designs is just hyperloop just comes out and like no no you need airlocks for that so suffice to say it's idiotically expensive at the maglev stage now you have added something that is 10 times more expensive and if you do it underground tunnels are idiotically expensive on top of that so yeah at this time you are realizing you are reaching around 5 to 600 million dollar per kilometer i'm not exaggerating it literally some tunnels actually have that kind of cost and they also need a third tunnel you know you'll have one up line one down line you'll one have one service tunnel line just in case you know to rescue them and again because of the vacuum you can't just you know go in from each other so 
and the pods that are like you know the images the that pods are the most common images that you're gonna get about that they're gonna be claustrophobic on a level that most people don't realize it first the first pods are like shown like uh, you are inside the f1 cockpit but you can see outside in uh, hyperloop you cannot see outside that's a very very big difference to your psychology now of course not everybody is susceptible well, maybe only one percent people are maybe ten percent are but it is a point that you have to take into consideration when you are building a public transit second it needs to carry its own oxygen even at low pressure it cannot breathe like the low pressure that they are saying is so low that the aircraft that can handle that altitude needs liquid oxygen military aircraft generally take liquid oxygen with them for breathing purpose even some commercial aircraft private aircrafts could do that generally it's not advised for uh, commercial use but uh, for military use almost all military aircraft have the capacity to carry liquid oxygen so this part is also removed from all the discussion is like how the heck people are gonna breathe in it it's like people just gonna breathe no, like when plane suffers any critical loss of pressure, they can drop the plane to 10,000 feet and people can breathe. You can't do anything like that. So it has to carry its own oxygen. And you might say, okay, the journey is very small, let's say 20, 30 minutes. Here's the, you are still traveling a long distance and you still have to have contingency. What if the power failure happens while, the, while you are in the transit? You have to have it. You cannot be like, okay, uh, see, like if it works, works, doesn't work, you're dead. It, that's not acceptable for public transit. Of course, it's acceptable for rocket travel, but not for public transit. And the port that they're going to build is not going to last long because of this thermal uh, pressure expansion. This is the core reason why aircrafts are retired very quickly. Like, uh, even though you might see an aircraft that looks completely intact, all you will be like, okay, let's just, you know, bolt on some new engines and it will be good to go. No, the reason is when you, the plane is at the sea level, basically at airport, it has pressure balance, like inside pressure is same as the outside pressure. However, when it is climbing up, it does not have the same outside pressure and the inside pressure is also not at the sea level. The aircraft generally try to keep it at uh, 30% uh, not 30% basically they're trying to give you an altitude of around 10,000 uh, 10, feet so you can easily breathe but it's not that's why your ear can tell like if they were giving you 100% same PSI on the sea level you would your ears would not hurt like uh, the, that's the reason why people with sensitive ear can sense it because pressure did drop like of course it did not drop to like you know full uh, zero but it dropped enough that you can detect it and this makes the metal expand and contract expand and contract this cause what's called metal fatigue now you're really okay let's build with carbon fiber carbon fiber is not cheap Shinchan is built with aluminum or tgb is built with aluminum ice trains are built with aluminum there is a reason why you use that if you're building hundreds of them you need to build them out of cheap material and even carbon fiber has a limit it's not gonna expand and contract expand and contract forever it will shatter and not to mention the expansion and contraction will make this expansion and contraction look easy why because this is only the pressure difference here is very it's there but it's like uh, going from 15 psi to 5 psi on the vacuum train it's going from 15 psi at the sea level to 0 psi so understand the expansion and contraction will wear down the pods very quickly so it won't be like government invested in a pod and pods gonna run for uh, generally you want them to run for at least two to three decades yeah they're gonna be retiring it in five six years if not. so so what was the point of me making this sort of video i want you to understand all the companies that you see they are taking part in that pod competition they are using the hyperloop system as a test bed like let's say you want to test your uh, cooling system that you will employ in uh, satellites or things like that where you're going to get the vacuum chamber this guy is providing you vacuum chamber so you're like okay let's test it so all the technology that the company that they are testing and they will flat out tell you we are testing our you know power delivery system we are testing our maglev system we are testing the, that's why so many companies are putting their money in then they don't intend to build a you know final product they are just testing their products out if it works it works it doesn't work doesn't work like for them it's a test work. and those who are not paying for it like the in other places like where companies are being called upon like let's say government is like hiring them to like build that they're getting paid so they don't care whether it works or doesn't work so please you don't jump on the way oh so many companies are companies have two reasons a profit b using it as a test bed test bed you know, like suffice to say is quite uh, powerful especially if you want to test things in vacuum vacuum is not something that every tom dick and harry can create so that's the reason why so many companies are interested in and it's not that it cannot build it's just cost trillions of dollars 
trillions and to give you some perspective of how big a trillion is entire usa's gdp is around 15 trillion 14 to 15 trillion so let that sink in that's how expensive this is gonna be if it ever comes to the market so i all i so all i want of you guys is don't jump on the hype train so don't if see like tracks like this oh yeah india is gonna get hyperloop or this is gonna be the you know usa hyperloop network yeah no it's not happening the cost will be so damn high that if some poor soul or senator or some retard guy actually funded this, they're gonna bang their head in the stone quite soon after that because running cost of these things are so high, not to mention the capital cost is also so high. At the end, it will be so high that people won't travel on it. And you have to understand, I have never seen this kind of uh, you know publicity on something that supposed to carry people but hasn't carried even one people not even a te not even a single pe person has traveled like you have uh, the amount of like you know people's hope on this is surprisingly misplaced like let people tra travel on this let you know somebody actually uh, go there somebody actually figure out oh how i'm gonna breathe you know how we're gonna have emergency exit procedures don't be like okay just hyper do fast travel there's a cost to it and please be mindful, there are scenarios where, like in my own country, India, they built a metro network in a state, uh, in a you know city, it, it became white elephant, basically in engineering white elephant means you can't pay for it. Why? Because there was low public demand for it. Hyperloop costs so much that you have to sell so many tickets and not to mention you can't sell that many tickets because it's not a train, it's pods, each pods are traveling, it's not train like you know, Indian train can easily carry 800 to 900 passengers yes it is that high almost 1000 passengers is easy so you can't expect to travel that many people in one pod obviously and if you have multiple pods of course you have delay also so with time and the low capacity ticket price will go up so at the, at the end you are living in a point where per head ticket is roughly around fifty thousand dollars so yeah it's not happening and i please urge you to stop the hype if you don't you will pay for it because at the end the government are gonna pay for it and they're gonna pay it from your tax money so be mindful of this so the, uh, that was my presentation hope you guys liked it or learned from it in that case please like if you didn't dislike leave a comment and subscribe press the bell icon to be notified since i make video every day and thanks for watching